Following the introductory overview of the inverter, our next segment will delve into the comprehensive process of inverter installation and setup. This will encompass step-by-step -step guidance, covering everything from initial mounting to configuring settings for optimal performance. Additionally, we'll provide insights into best practices and troubleshooting tips to ensure a seamless setup experience. As depicted on this slide, it's important to keep in mind that these tools are essential for installing a Dynas inverter. Additionally, a smartphone is necessary for the initial commissioning of the unit. Every Dynas inverter package includes the following components. Inverter, backplate, fastening screws and bolts, MC4 connectors, parallel cable, power cable, RJ45 connectors, CT clamp, Wi-Fi stick, Bluetooth antenna, and a user manual. Regarding the power cable included, here are the specifications. We provide a 2-gauge cable with the 5 and 6 kilowatt inverters and a 1-gauge cable with the 8 kilowatt inverter models. Now, let's discuss the indicator lights displayed on the inverter interface. These lights play a crucial role as they provide a quick overview of the inverter's status. On the display, you'll notice five indicator lights. The battery icon, power icon, Wi-Fi icon, RS-485 icon, and Bluetooth icon. Each icon illuminates when in use. The battery and power icons remain lit at all times. The battery icon indicates the battery status and also serves as an indicator for communication between the inverter and battery. If communication with the battery is interrupted, the battery icon outline will disappear. The power icon appears white during normal operation, turns yellow when a warning is issued and red when a fault occurs in the inverter. Moving forward, let's examine the port layout specifically designed for the 5 and 6 kilowatt inverters. As you can observe, this layout adheres to the standard configuration that many are accustomed to. And here, the port layout for the 8 kilowatt model. In this segment, we'll explore installation suggestions and recommendations for these inverters. Given their reliance on natural cooling, maintaining adequate spacing is crucial. We recommend a minimum clearance of 500 millimeters or more at the top, 800 millimeters or more at the bottom, and 250 millimeters or more on each side of the inverter. It's imperative to install it upright on a brick wall. For outdoor installations, ensure the unit is shielded from direct exposure to rain or sunlight and is placed under a protective cover. Moving forward, let's examine the junction connection box. Let's begin by exploring the communication interface in detail. Within this block, you'll find the BMS communication port for our battery BMS, along with the DRM port and RS-485 ports. Additionally, the parallel connection ports are located here, intended for use in parallel setups with the dip switches set to the on position. The communication block facilitates the CT cable in ports 1 and 2. Ports 3 and 4 manage the generator start-stop signal, while ports 10 and 12 handle the ATS signal, providing a 240 volt output when connected to the grid. Here, we have the AC connector ports designated for gen, backup and grid connections. Additionally, you'll notice the battery positive and negative connection ports. On the DC side, it's crucial to ensure that the MC4 connectors are securely fastened, ensuring a snug fit with an audible click when connecting. Here we have the wiring diagram illustrating the CT connections. As mentioned earlier, the CT is connected on ports 1 and 2 with a crucial detail. The arrow must face the grid direction. The CT comes in a standard length of 5 meters and can be extended up to 50 meters if necessary. It's essential to connect the CT after the grid side load for optimal functionality. Here we have an inverter wiring diagram featuring a connected generator. 